Yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion. Coming to you with another bait and switch this week, right? Yes, the home. Tennessee is the home of Dwayne and Greg Almond. Did you know that? Yeah, it occurred to me. So hopefully you're familiar with the Almond Brothers Band. Great, great Southern rock band. I, I love them. Well, I like them. <laughs> anyway, uh, good to see you here on a... Oh, well, it's Sunday morning and it is the 8th, right? The 8th of October. So uh, we are moving right along into the fall and you're out here. Hopefully we won't give me ticks today. And uh, yep, you're right. That's a Henry revolver, Henry big boy. Okay. New firearm. Uh, got it in, well, this week, last while or whenever. And uh, been shooting it. Uh, several times. I didn't bring it out yet, did I? So I have it out. I didn't bring it out last week. No, or did I? I don't think so. But it's. Uh, did I? If I did, I'm sorry. I'm just getting seen out. Uh, man, have I been messing with a lot of different firearms the last two or three weeks? Wow. And uh, so uh, I could be confused more than than normal, but I don't think uh, I've had this out yet to show you. And uh, yeah, big boy revolver, lots of requests for it and uh, get our impressions of this baby. And I'm gonna shoot this thing. Now there's a reason for the bait and switch. There really always is a reason for the bait and switch, I think. Uh, it's not just a last minute whim. Don't think it has been. Uh, it's because the other firearm has not been fired yet. Okay, and I wanted you to know when that's going to happen so you could witness it you would have witnessed it anyway but you would know you're witnessing the first shots okay whereas i've been firing this all right first time you've seen me fire it but i have fired it this other uh, firearm shotgun uh, beretta 1301 has not been fired brand new okay so we'll fire it together and see if it blows up and blows me up How's that? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's uh, not a big deal, but if it's a firearm I haven't fired yet, think, why not? Yeah, why not? So, also want to thank Alabama Holster. I'll put my phone back in my Alabama Holster. How's that? Turn it down. That doesn't turn the ringtone down, does it? I don't know. I get surprised sometimes. And uh, I really am liking I, I'm I've gotten used to it. I didn't think I could adapt to it, a uh, phone holster. But I think I have, uh, it's, uh, I don't hit it on thing. It proved, it has proven itself. Uh, you see it, uh, like you don't know what a phone holster looks like. Uh, it's, it's new though, it's new to me. It's a new concept. I just have not done it really with a holster like this. I had a clip on one one time, I think I did. But, you know, I wasn't sure. And plus left-handed, do I want to do it left-handed? Cause I. But then again, I, I, when I had it in my pocket, I'd have it in my left pants pocket, right? So I was going both ways with that. I would have it in my left pants pocket or my shirt pocket. So I'd pull out my right hand, sometimes my left hand in my pocket. It's just that I don't grab it with two thumbs when I text or do anything like that. I do it, uh, I put it in my right hand and I'll text with my thumb, you know, when I'm texting and selecting things. So it's basically a right-handed phone for me, <laughs> right-handed phone. This phone, it's not ambidextrous. And so I do most of it with my left, right hand, but it kind of needed to be on my left side. So anyway, got used to that. So Alabama holster, appreciate it. You know, it's nice. And uh, hell, they also make gun holsters. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, they make firearms holsters, really cool little concealment holsters. I probably have one right on me, don't I? Yeah, I do. 
There's Alabama holster. Here's some talon grips. And there's an FN. FN's a sponsor of the channel. Nah, you know better than that. No gun company will be a sponsor of the channel. It looks like it sometimes, doesn't it? When I, uh, I don't know, I'll go. But anyway, appreciate Alabama Holster for their support. Uh, great company. Uh, it, it appears sometimes that uh, maybe, you know, to, to the unenlightened or the, or the new person to the channel, perhaps, or, or I don't know, there's people who don't know us. Same people who don't get any of my jokes because they're new. Uh, they don't they don't get my sense of humor until they've been around a while. But I might go through a, a streak, and I've been on a little bit of a streak this year, haven't I? I have uh, ended up with a an FN 545, which you saw in the pumpkin carving this week. I hope I used it for that, and uh, the FN. 510 10 millimeter same gun and 10 millimeter and this little fn reflex i bought any more fns <laughs> like, that's all for this year i guess but i do go on a streak if they're firearms i like i don't care who makes them could be high point or glock or fn sig anybody uh beretta and if it's a quality gun and that i like i yeah i get it i get it that's what i did with when i discovered glocks and uh, it, it's funny how times change. Uh, back then in the 80s, I was considered uh, by a lot of people, well, I started to say something really dumb. I was considered pretty weird because I was in the Glocks. Well, I've always been considered pretty weird probably, but, but being a Glock fan, you were like sort of out there uh, really on the cutting edge, I guess, in a lot of ways. Wow, polymer pistols, you know, got a high capacity polymer pistol. And, uh, where's your 1911? What's wrong with you? You're losing your mind? So th that was kind of the attitude of a lot of people in the 80s and even in the 90s. And so, uh, so that has <laughs> reversed the fact that I am not stuck in whatever I did yesterday necessarily. You know, like I've said, I've been, I was one of the early adopters of uh, microcomputers back when nobody else was hardly and uh, laptops and all that kind of thing and I, I pat myself on the back sounds like but I'm one I, my point is uh, uh, that uh, I'm not afraid of new guns that's my point and believe it or not at one point the Glock was considered the newest thing out there you know it was like uh, a couple of years ago people putting uh, optics on their handguns all right, two years, uh, whatever the time frame would have been, when people started doing that as carry guns. Now, they've been doing it for a long time in competition. But people who were doing that early on were, yeah, really? You want to put that on your carry gun? You know? Uh, and there weren't many people at all doing that, you know, a year, two, three, whatever, four years ago. And so it's kind of like that. It goes through stages. Now, nothing too strange about having an optic on your handgun, right? You go to a gun shop or look online or new guns that are introduced, uh, even this FN or whatever it is, uh, you know, it's hard to find one that doesn't have an optic on it already, maybe, you know, installed. You know, so things have really changed. And uh, so anyway, so now that's old school. That's a, a Glock's kind of a FUD gun, almost <laughs> weird. Although it's still one of the most popular pistols out there, but a lot of people uh, look at it that way that, uh, I don't know, they grew up with Glocks being touted so heavily, they got tired of it. And, uh, you know, so they, uh, if I don't care how good they are, I gotta be the contrarian and like something else. Well, I don't like something because I'm taking the contrarian view. That doesn't bother me. If something works, I don't care how long it's been working. I like 1911s. I like Colt single action armies. They've been working since 1873. <laughs> but when we're talking about carry and for a first line defensive firearm, it's a different matter, right? Uh, most of your collection, probably not everybody, you just gotta, you're just getting started. You just have a handful of guns, handful of guns. <laughs> One gun can be a handful. You just have four or five, you know, I don't know, a couple of modern pistols, shotgun, maybe an AR. So you, you haven't branched out yet into just like older guns or historic guns or maybe your first revolver some things like that but every gun is not a tactical piece for us is it in fact once you get past the the first line of of our collection what do you want to call it arsenal dare i say right uh then a lot of our our firearms are just 
fun guns to shoot. Now, anything that slings a piece of lead out the barrel could serve as a defensive firearm, right? But, but a lot of our firearms, it depends on who it is, but it could be, in my case, it's probably 90% of my firearms are just firearms that uh, they're collectible or antiques or they're fun to shoot, you know? How'd I get off on all that? I didn't mean to do that, did I? Yeah, I don't know. So let me shoot this thing again. Yeah, this is the Henry. I put some uh, uh, Steinel. I've got some uh, uh, PMC, Steinel, Federal, Fioki. I got different kinds here. We'll shoot some uh, 38 Special. And uh, so this thing, I have been shooting it. This is this is uh, you know sometimes you see meat like this Beretta come out with the first shots of some firearm that we either bought got from Buds or I bought or whatever borrowed or whatever the case might be. This one is the uh, the opposite end. I've been shooting it for a couple of weeks. We've done a video or two with it and everything, and so I'm just now bringing it out. I had it cleaned up to send back actually, and I thought well. I'm going to shoot that on Sunday morning. People uh, have been asking about it. You'll see the videos when we post, but here it is. Y'all are worth it. I'll clean it again. <laughs> I try to clean these up pretty well before I send them back to Buds. All right, so it's a double action revolver, of course. It's the SDI sign. How about the Alabama Holster logo? How about the Buds logo? <laughs> Did them all. Uh. So there I went and fired, what, uh, four of them. Let's reach out to the gong. I don't remember where to hold, but. All right. I don't know, shooting at the gong with y'all looking over my shoulder. Seems like I've done that before. Maybe, maybe it was in the regular video. Yeah, it, it shoots right on, I noticed pretty much so so anyway, our experience with it has been uh, positive it seemed like a pretty strong uh, durable little little pistol and uh, I thought I'd shoot it one more time before I send it back yeah I'll do that uh, so yeah kind of a yeah I was gonna mention about uh, I've oh, been shooting a lot of different guns including the 1842 Harper's Ferry 69 caliber musket. Yeah. Uh, and man, that is such a cool uh, musket. Made in 1846, um, a model 1842. You have seen the first video, I hope, on that. And it's just so much fun. If you, uh, if you're, I don't know, I feel like you're inundated and smothered in black rifles and polymer handguns and you need a break. Maybe a break would do you some good. Load up the first video on that 1842 uh, Harper's Ferry and just watch the video and enjoy breathing the black powder and learning about the history, a little bit about Harper's Ferry and that particular firearm i'm not the best at that you know i'm not in of course but i mean just those things are so special they really are nothing more enjoyable uh, for me than an afternoon which i had this week uh firing that again i fired it before the video and uh, during the video after the video uh, just just chapter two enjoying it again and uh, just a beautiful fall day doesn't get any better it really doesn't <laughs> so uh, yeah that's uh, something you need to keep in mind oh by the way it looks like uh, maybe this crazy brace thing isn't gonna fly right yeah it's looking better and better about that so uh, yeah the well you know what I mean by the pistol brace so I've been uh, following that watching that and because I have one, unlike some of you who might have three or four, uh, and uh, it's just especially a big issue for you. But yeah, I have that Evo 3, that CZ thing I bought last year, and, or whenever it was, and I just really like that thing. And uh, so I took the, uh, the brace, quote unquote, off of it, uh, and uh, it stowed away. 
Uh, but I'm anxious to put that back on and get it out and shoot it some. We even have a video comparing that with another gun that we haven't posted that we will not post until we're sure that thing's been resolved. We're too public. It's not that I'm afraid. Some of you all probably haven't even taken, I don't know, taken your brace off, you're not worried about it, and all these kinds of things. It's, well, it's a lot easier to be macho about that if you don't have thousands of people watching whatever you do with your firearms, right? And uh, where you, I could even be a target of some some hater action, you know, like that, a politician or uh, totalitarian wannabes, you know, out there. And so I, I, I realistically do have to uh, be a little more careful about that kind of thing. And I enjoy firearms, enjoy the hobby too much uh, to, oh, to risk for some specific detailed firearm that I didn't even own, you know, for 60 years or 70 years. This is not a, a primary thing for me anyway. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so that that's looking better. Just make sure you continue to stay in touch with your representatives. Let them know and join all the organizations you can because they're all fighting uh, for it. And it, that 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 fight has uh, spread out, hasn't it? It used to be, as I was growing up, most of my life, it was the NRA or nothing almost, you know? So whatever they did, that's what happened. And and kind of like government bureaucracy, I guess, it, whenever you have like one gigantic entity, organization, then, you know, it can become ineffective, it, can, it can't even become corrupt, it can, all kinds of things. Uh, can happen when you don't have competition or other. It's just probably better that it's spread out. You know, the Gunners of America, the Firearms Policy Coalition, run down the line. Uh, Second Amendment Foundation, your state organizations, the NRA, still doing something. You know, so it's uh, spread out a lot more now, and that, that's probably a good thing because there are so many places where we have to to work, attack in the courts in various states and and everything and a lot of people have different expertise levels of expertise you know in different areas so yeah, well the courts is uh, that's where it's happening isn't it so uh yeah so good news there maybe all right uh seems like there's something i'm forgetting about here important right at the beginning but probably not all right let me confess again here i uh noticed I don't think I've talked about this yet. Like I say, we've done a lot of videos and been shooting a lot of different guns so I can easily forget or mix it up. Uh, I got to noticing that this is the Beretta 1301. What a popular shotgun this is amongst a lot of people. And y'all have requested it. I think I even tried to get one about a couple of years ago, but due to the pa pandemic, uh, you know, couldn't find one or something. I believe this is the one. And uh, so I don't know, it's just kind of been off my radar, hadn't been on my radar. And, uh, but recently I got thinking about that and I, I saw somebody's video just loving this thing and shooting it. And uh, I said, you know, that's pretty popular. It seems to be well liked and uh, maybe I'd like it. So I requested one from Buds. I saw they had one and uh, have been shooting it for a couple of weeks. We've done a video or two with it, okay? And right from the get-go, uh, I just realized, you know, I like this a lot. I might have to have one. You know how that goes. And uh, so, I, <laughs> I have not even sent the one I got from Bud's back yet. I'll send it back this week, but uh, and I, I, I bought one before, you know, that one even got out of my hands. I, I ordered one and it just came in today, okay, today. Uh, so I've owned, I've owned this, had this, uh, just for a matter of uh, about an hour or two. And uh, why not? I could have brought the other, it's already dirty and fired it, but eh, let's just break this one in, make sure it works. If it doesn't work, I'll be sick, right? But uh, anyway, I've got it. I've got it, uh, the magazine loaded. You know, it's like the Benel. You know, when you do that, you don't necessarily put one in the in the the chamber. It's uh, and if you've never had a semi-auto shotgun, one like this, that might be kind of weird to you. But you push this little button, 
and we'll see if it happens if she's unsafe. There we go. That puts one in the carrier. And now it will put one in. So unless you have one in the carrier, you're not going to get one into the chamber. Now as you, the trigger, pulling the trigger does the same thing as pushing that little button. So anytime you pull the trigger, it's going to have one there ready for you, right? So let's see if it works. This is the Beretta 1301 Tactical. Okay. And let's just shoot something. Should we blow over the target? <laughs> let's do that. Let's put, let's see if we can get the, uh, uh, blow the uh, bullseye out. Nope. Like I said, you do have to put one in the chamber. All right. That's the end of that bullseye. <laughs> oh, you notice what I've got down here on the stump? That is the, uh, this, the 2023 pumpkin carving, right? You recognize that I posted that this week, so you should recognize it, all right? I'm going to maybe shoot it with a shotgun today, just like I'm going to shoot that two <laughs> Yeah, and maybe even some steel. Oh. All right, it works. I put the, uh, it comes with uh, some uh, extenders. Oh, what do you call it? Not extenders. Uh, Oh gosh, not inserts or anything like that. But anyway, I, uh, I I put those in to give me the added length of pull and uh, spacers. Yeah, I knew they'd come to me spacers. So uh, I, I got both of them in there, and uh, that that feels pretty good. I don't think I need a uh, slip-on for this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's the uh, pumpkin car uh, from this year, and uh, most of you have seen it. I'll tell you why. Maybe before I shoot it. I'll show you the back, okay? That's a question people ask every year. And you'll see also that this one, it's, it's a beautiful pumpkin, but it was a little bit flat in the back. And well, that doesn't really matter. Nobody sees the back. It's, uh, it's where you carve it that's the most important. And so we normally don't even show the back, but, and it's been sitting out for uh, three, four days. And normally after three, four days, the ants and the bugs get into it to the point where you don't want to go near it. That, you've probably had that experience, carve a pumpkin or mess with it and set it on a porch or something. And it just uh, attracts all kinds of bugs, doesn't it? Uh, and it, it has some, but it's not eaten up. You want to see the back? Okay, I'll show you. I'll pick it up and get bugs all over me. It's kind of moldy already. It's a little gross. Yeah, it's gotten moldy. But anyway, that's the back. And that's what they look like. Of all things, it gets a face on the back, right? <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's your bonus for coming out on a Sunday. See? So a lot of people will never see the back of that pumpkin. They'll just continue to post. Well, show us the back, show us the back. Let's just go ahead and, and do it. You want to? I'll load up this thing. Shotgun, I, I'll, uh, we're safe. I'll put one in the chamber. And seven in the tube is what it holds. It just barely holds seven of these, I noticed. It's fioki. Okay, I, I like the shotgun. I, uh, you know, I needed another shotgun, like a hole in the head, but, uh, I, I just fell in love with it. If you have a Beretta 1301, uh, share your uh, opinions. Because I have never owned one, I've never fired one, never owned a Beretta shotgun, period. Uh, so it was new to me, and I don't know how I have missed it all this time. All right, funny face pumpkin, this is the end of you. All right, make sure I get a little spread here. Oh, got the, oh, let's put another round in. Finish off that thing. <laughs> I don't like to see him sit there and spew like that. Now, since I haven't fired it, uh, I don't know how the sights are. Uh, the other one, I, I didn't really have to adjust. 
not that I'm interested in or anything. When I shot some slugs, I'll, I'll do that. I'll put some slugs in and take a couple of shots. I brought a screwdriver just in case I need to or want to mess with the, uh, uh, you know, the, the sight, the rear sight's uh, adjustable for windage and elevation of all things. So, yeah, man, it was fun carving it. Uh, I hope you saw that with the, the pumpkin with the FN 545 uh, with suppressor, the Banish 45 suppressor on it. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. If there's something wrong with you and you haven't uh, gone to the channel and seen that, okay? It's a full minute and a half of your life now. <laughs> They're short videos. Okay, now I'm hoping I see the leaves drifting down. I love the fall. Uh, there's a lot of them on the ground over there. The ground's covered with leaves, you know, Seth? So I, I might shoot at one here later. All right. Let's uh, put one in. Ah, mosquitoes are trying to eat me up. Well, let's try the gong first. All right. Okay, not too far off at least. I'll try the uh, buffalo hanging over there. I knew that was low. All right. Ah, feels like they're right on. That first miss on the buffalo wasn't, uh, it wasn't because I was holding, well, I was holding the wrong place. It, I didn't mean to fire yet. I was almost on the target, but I, I was still under it. Uh, yeah, nice trigger. <laughs> I'm gonna go down here and hit that turkey in the holler. Make him holler. Yeah, in the coffin. Okay, my new rifle. Yep, I like it. I don't especially love the uh, the sight picture on the ghost ring. I don't know. You know, it's got the, what, tritium rear and front? I don't know if that's tritium on the rear side or not, but it's the same way, it's the same sight uh, as I recall on my M4. There's something about that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you gotta line up and make sure your elevation is right on the rear side. It kinda seems like it, takes too long or messes with my mind a little bit but it is it is on that's good somebody sighted it in at the factory so I don't have to put the screwdriver to it that's neat so if any y'all had these uh, 1301 I mean I think it's a fairly popular model uh, for like skeet shooting and everything else now they don't look like this this is the uh, tactical I don't know if it's a law enforcement model. I'm a little confused about the thing, to tell you the truth. They make one with a pistol grip and an adjustable comb and all that kind of thing. And I don't know if that's the law enforcement model. Uh, the more I studied it, the more confused I got. Various websites and looking around. I just knew I wanted this particular configuration exactly. Uh, without the comb, without the pistol grip, certainly. It's one of the attractions of it. I love the M4. But... Uh, I mean, it's just really neat. Um, but uh, the pistol grip, I, I don't necessarily like on it, but I, I like the M4 configuration. Uh, it's just different. It's exactly, I guess, what the military has used for a long time and everything. And so it's kind of neat having that same shotgun. It's proven, you know, the reliability, the durability, and, you know, that's the configuration of it. So it's kind of cool. You know, it's the Marine shotgun or one of them they've had several that they uh, use but so i prefer this reminds me a lot of my uh, super 90 especially since i took the pistol grip stock off of it years ago because this one is light this is light wow is it light and just handy and i sound like a beretta salesman but this, that's what uh, that's why i forked over my own bucks for for one the loading and everything, you all have know what I'm talking about. This tab here for you know, loading the first, I mean, it's amazing how simple it is to use and convenient. And when you're loading, I don't think you can, uh, I don't think you can pinch your finger 
or cut your finger if you wanted to. You know how so many shotguns, that's a, you're, you're, oh, I pinched my thumb, you know, or you're rubbing it on the side there, the rails, and you kind of rub it raw, or you actually cut yourself, kind of like a lever action rifle, some of them. You know, so loading a shotgun, it, it's like that. It's very similar to a lever gun, right? You don't know what you got until you, <laughs> you get it home and you start loading ammo in it. And every time you load around in that lever gun, you pinch your finger or it hurts. You're about to take the skin off your finger messing with it. And then others aren't that way at all. Like the 1886 Winchester is just famous for loading up like butter. Yeah, it's just really smooth and all that. And, then, and others too, it just depends. And shotguns, same thing. Some of them load smoothly. You can just do it and you hit your, your knuckle against it and there's nothing there cutting you or anything. Well, that's the way this is. Uh, so uh, they, they, uh, they really uh, have the shooter in mind, okay? So speaking of that, today, that's what I am. I'm the shooter, right? So it's a Beretta 1301 Tactical. Law enforcement tactical, I think, technically. But, well, you see what it is, you know, what it has on it. Okay. I think I can reach out and, well, let's pop some stuff here. Had mid pop. Oh, I didn't have one in the chamber, so you heard that when I pulled the trigger. It put one in the carrier. Let's get used to it. <laughs> Take everything out here. Uh, what else needs some bird shot on it? There's a couple of paint cans, empty paint cans. I should be able to hit both of them. Yeah, with one shot. Uh, what else? You notice I'm not off. Oh, felt like. You notice I'm not shooting bowling pins. You know, obviously you don't want to shoot bowling pins with a uh, bird shot or even number four or uh i don't know what would be the those of you who have a lot of experience you know shooting bowling pins what would uh i don't think i'd want to shoot them with even a double lot buck they are so tough and with that plastic i think you might even get a pellet back a double lot buck back you know uh so i just i, I shoot them with slugs and that's it if a slug bounces off one and comes back and hits me I figure it's my time to go, right? <laughs> one tough bowling pin. He would also be de defying the laws of uh, physics because uh, the, the weight of the slug hitting him, I think he's going to be moving. In fact, let's demonstrate that. Why don't we just do that? We haven't had some slugs. we got some Fiocchi slugs here. I've never tried these. Uh, defense dynamic aero slug. Ooh, no, wow. I think I ordered these from... Uh, you know, wideners one day. Yeah. I kind of like this Fiocchi stuff. It's, uh, I mean, they're not a sponsor, but, I, uh, you know, the, the clear, you can, you can see the cute little pieces of uh, shot. And same with this. I didn't know that. Until I opened it. Look at that. You can see what you're shooting. There's a big chunk of lead in there. You can see the rifling on it. Isn't that cool? Of course, you don't have any rifling in the shotgun barrel, but it, it still makes a difference, apparently. Let's try some of these. Those are cool. Wow, cool looking. Oh no, it's a hollow point. You see the, that makes it especially dangerous. A one ounce chunk of lead hollow point. Chunk of lead. <laughs> Safety on. Pop that one in there. Okay. Oh yeah. Man, that'd be a be a mean defensive round. Of course, it's because you can see it. It reminds me of the Brennicky. These aren't the Brennicky. I think I've got some of those, yeah. But, uh, okay. Let's shoot something with these. All right. I like this shotgun. I'm going to try to put, let's put one on the gong first. All right. I could tell the way it hit it, that was a hollow point, couldn't you? Let's try the uh, buffalo hanging over there. <laughs> oh, sweet. How about the tombstone? Oh no, there's a ram over there standing. 
in front of that wall. Let me try him. All right. That leave me one. Oh, I was going to try it on a bowling pin, wasn't I? Let's pop that one right there. <laughs> See what I mean? If a slug comes back and gets me, I'm. It's my time to be got, isn't it? So we're empty. Yeah, man. Uh, I tell you, you know what's been creeping through my mind? That this might be my favorite shotgun. Whew. And I didn't even know about it. I virtually didn't know about it. Anything about it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that's the way it is in a firearms world, isn't it? I, I've talked about that before a few times, how some of my favorite firearms are firearms I was not even aware of, uh, you know, earlier. Uh, I mean, until I was 50 or 60 or whatever, you know? Partly because of this project. I'm gonna make a list one day. Uh, I had four or five came to mind, but with the CX Storm, or you know, and it happened to be a Beretta, right? But uh, of the firearms that I really wasn't aware of, you all requested videos on them. Uh, this would be the last 15, 17 years, whatever, that you all have requested, or someone just lent me one, maybe you didn't request it, but I think all of them you did. And I said, well, I'm not sure what that is, but I see people requesting it, and uh, it, it's a Swedish Mauser or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, I'll do a video on one of those. Oh, anybody will care about it, you know, and well, then, of course, people do care because everybody else knows about it but me. <laughs> and uh, and then I have to have one because I fall in love with it. That has happened with uh, seven, eight, maybe eight or ten guns, different fire. I'll make a list one day. Maybe we do a video on that. <laughs> guns I didn't know about and uh, that are favorites of mine now. So I, I've always liked uh, the Super 90, you know, because it's lightweight. And you get a little more kick because of it, but uh, but not a lot. Uh, this thing, did, nothing I've shot today seemed to hurt at all, even the slugs. Uh, so, and you know the other one, same gun that I have to send back. This one I don't. I get to keep. Uh, it has it had bobbled. It has with any ammo. Uh, we have fired high brass, low brass, uh, field loads from the very beginning, just like this one, and uh, slugs, uh, the number four buck, maybe double lot buck. It just fired a lot of stuff in it, varying power ranges, no problems at all. And that's the word I get, you know, from people in reviews that it's just it's extremely reliable. And, you know, it would really be a, a switch for me, you know, speaking of old dogs learning new tricks. Uh, but man, if this thing continues, you know, the, the two combined, and one advantage I have experience with two of them now. You might have one if, that you have ever shot. I have actually fired two of them and a lot of shooting with the other one, and I'll have a lot of shooting with this one. And if it goes on for a long time with no malfunctions, I, I would be tempted to uh, make this my defensive shotgun. You know, that, uh, you know, the first line, you know, we all have different systems, of course, but we may have a handgun you go through first, but uh, the elephant really uh, goes up, the balloon really goes up, uh, and you feel like you want to get a long gun or a, a shotgun, then, uh, you know, we all have a priority, uh, our own priority set, and whether it's you know, push button safe or whatever it might be, uh, whatever the access is, that's the quickest one to get that's loaded. Okay, put it that way, at least the tube. The magazine, uh, you know, this might be it. You know, I'm a long way to say that, but yeah, this one, maybe instead of uh, my 870 or Mossberg, and I'm, boy, I've been a pump person for a long, long time. Uh, so, I don't know, never know. Uh, pretty cool and I know there are a lot of uh, well some modifications you can do is it Lang Langdon tactical I've seen some people put their stock on and it looks a little odd I, I'd like to shoulder one that has that Langdon tactical stock on it uh, if I can get the same length of pull as this and, and everything and you know although this, although this one feels fine and the fore end I know they make a fore end that's different 
uh, like this piece up here for the M-lock and uh, the, the uh, quick detach uh, sling is a little different. I don't know what else they do. I think they do sights, different things with sights. You get the 1913 piece of rail here in this sight. I, I like this sight okay, I think. Uh, it'll, it'll do. There's nothing I'm desperate to change. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I don't even have to change the sights. So this screwdriver I brought for that purpose, if they were way off, I was gonna you know, adjust a little bit, but not uh, <laughs> bore you with too much tedious sight uh, uh, adjustment, you know, in video. But, uh, you know, where I hadn't fired before, you just never know. All right, so I'm taking too long already, right? Anything else that you're dying to know? I guess I've not given any advice for kids, have I? For youngsters or oldsters? Do I have any? Something like uh, yeah, I was going to mention that, uh, you know, young people uh, try not to get obsessed, uh, suffer from this race and skin color obsession that the world's obsessed with right now, you know. Uh, try not that. But the other advice is uh, try to, uh, again, refrain from, this is a common theme of mine, try to refrain from being overly influenced by media. And in ways we don't even know we're being influenced by. So I guess it starts out with an awareness, self-awareness, you know, but an awareness that we are being influenced by incoming media, whether it's on your phone, your laptop, the TV, the network, cable, whatever it is, news by what is omitted, not always by what you see, but what you're not seeing and what's not being reported or, you know, points that are not being explored and all that sort of thing. And, and by the entertainment value of what you're seeing. It's just cool. You know, good example, of course, are the, uh, the you know, with Big Pharma, you know, the commercials, you know, in the most common themes, seem like over and over, there's a lot, just a lot of happy people. It uh, doesn't matter, they're way overweight. They're dancing around the street and they're taking the drug of choice and so they're happy people and they're going on living their life normally. I got a cat meowing in my holster here. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, uh, and, and so, you know, how those go, you see those every day and it's just people dancing around, they're in a cool hipster hat and they're they're playing a saxophone and and they're just uh, a lot of them are people like in my age group or younger or older or whatever and and you see they're moving around just fine because they're taking you name the drug right and you might just not be very cool if you're not taking that drug you might want to talk to your doctor and make sure you're taking that because you might not be feeling great you might uh, have some aches and pains that that would help you with and you should be buying that drug and you can be like these people, you know, just having a good time, playing some classic rock and jiving around on the street, you know, and all this kind of thing. Uh, you know, so just just be aware of that. Be aware of how we're being influenced. And, it's, and, and you, you can see that too, but I think there's just a lot to that that's more subtle than, uh, than what meets the eye, you know. That's, that's the way all advertising does. You know, it's like whether they're advertising a beer or whatever, right? You don't just put, come out with your, your beer and say, oh, this beer is really good, it's refreshing, and it's got this and this and this in it, it doesn't have sugar, it doesn't have this in it, and I think you'll like it. No, they don't do that. They don't talk about what's in it very much at all. They, they just have a, a bar or some party where a lot of people are having fun, a lot of beautiful people maybe or not, but they're regular people, maybe maybe average-looking people, trying to appeal to everybody, and they're just having a good time, watching a football game, whatever, with this particular brand. And you could be just like these people, you know. So, just the that's just the psychology of it, right? So just be aware of what you're seeing. It's not that necessarily the, the marketing people or the advertising agencies are evil. They just know how to affect people's. <sighs> Minds, however <laughs> you want to say that, okay? All right, so, uh, I am going to shoot some more. What, you want to see this revolver, probably. Some of you don't care about shotguns. Uh, this revolver, it's, it, I had to, I've had to, uh, to 
be good, behave myself. When I saw this at NRA show and everything, I don't know, why you bother making a revolver? It's kind of funky looking revolver. Smith and Cole to figure this out a long time ago, you know. Taurus has tried to copy it and others and Charter Arms and what, you know, with less expensive versions of it. But we all know what a revolver is supposed to look like. Uh, Capo Rhino didn't get the MMO. They made something totally different. But uh, if you're gonna make something like a Smith or a Colt, make it like a Smith or a Colt, please. That was kind of, you know, again, I'm ingrained, indoctrinated, and uh, not really. I just gone for many, many decades with a Colt or a Smith and Wesson, and they got a revolver right. They're great uh, products and all that. But I'm trying to trying to keep an open mind about it. And it is in keeping kind of with what Henry does, you know, you have the little brass on it and they not, they didn't try to make a replica of anything. It's just kind of a Henry uh, version of a revolver and it ain't half bad. I mean, it really feels solid and it's got a nice double action, uh, single action. It uh, mechanically, it seems really sound got kind of a bull barrel almost on it. It's, it's just a, what, a four inch or four and a quarter, but it's got enough weight and uh, you can fire magnums and it does just fine. I haven't done that, have I? Let's find some magnums here. I've got some PMC magnums, I think. Yeah, I haven't fired that in a long time. Oh, about dumped them out, he's upside down. So let's shoot some magnums. Uh, I don't clean any lead that's in there, right? I clean my ears out too and yours if you don't have your muffs on so anyway it's uh yeah it, it's fine it's fine if the appearance of it uh you can get past that it not being exactly like a colt or a smith and wesson or a Kiapa rhino or char <laughs> it's a little different but not dramatically uh, you know if anything it might oh uh, of course this this one has the birds uh head grips on it they, they have the more of a standard grip too, gunfighters grips, I think they call those. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Ruger Security 6 kind of kind of frame a little bit, but it's, it's just, it's, it's fine. It's fine, been shooting it fair amount. All right, get those ears in tight. Ugh. Wow, this place is devastated. Somebody's blown everything up. Let's try that old cowboy. Does fine, does fine. So, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. I gotta send that thing back, clean her up again, and send it back. But thought I'd leave you a look at it before before I do that. Okay, we'll be posting video on it here this fall. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. I I think it kind of resembles a Ruger, maybe more than Coulter, Smith and Wesson. Yeah. So, same solid. We've not had any issues with it. Can I? Can I shoot my uh, shotgun one more time? Okay, I'll have to answer that in a minute. I'm gonna shoot my shotgun and then I'll let you go, okay? And my favorite, favorite firearm. Uh, all right. I will put a, yeah, I've got some more ammo. I will shoot any more of those. Those slugs are too pretty to shoot, I'll tell you. They really are. Safe? All right. Shotgunning is so much fun. And most, well, a lot of you know that. I don't know about most, but uh, you have learned how much fun blasting with a shotgun is. Okay, so let's blast our way out of here, and then I'll let you go. All right. What do I want to shoot? I don't know. thought I'd try to shoot a little fast. It's famous for fast cycling, I know. And I have tried that. I've laid it down on one target and you can really shoot it fast. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna let you go. And I appreciate you coming around on a Sunday morning. 
or any morning or any afternoon. Uh, you can watch these videos anytime you like. You can wake up in the middle of the night and tune one of them up and watch it. Yep. And like I said earlier, uh, wow. Pull up some of those historic guns. After you've been out shooting or you've been fooling with black guns like this one uh, for maybe too long, find uh, you know one of my Civil War uh, rifle videos, or like that 1842, and just enjoy uh, you know a little time, maybe 20 minutes, with some charcoal burning, lead slinging, slow loading, boring talk, you know, one of those videos. <laughs> I, I, I was just reminded how much I enjoy those firearms. Uh, I don't really like watching my own videos, but sometimes I have to do it, or I don't have to, but I'll do it if, if we're about to do another video with a uh, firearm that we've done the first video with, but it's been a year or something, or five years, whatever it is, I said, okay, I don't, I don't want to, I'm going to link to it so I don't want to repeat everything. And then what did I say in that video or what did I forget that I might be able to make up for, you know, add it and, the, you know, that kind of thing. And so occasionally I will find myself, you know, like the morning we're going to do a video on some guy and I'll have it on my phone as I'm getting ready, messing around, listen to what I said or watching a little bit of it. I watched that first, uh, I was that happened to be in my, recliner with my laptop and I just loaded up that first video with the 1842 that's why it's fresh in my mind and I started watching it and I, I watched the whole thing all the way through which is not easy watching a video with me you know for 20 minutes but uh, but it was because of the gun you know was, I mean as I've always said these firearms are the stars of the videos they're the subject they're the stars and I just was thoroughly enjoying myself you know, even though I own that firearm, and that's my ugly face in there, but I was just enjoying seeing that thing, you know, because I hadn't shot it in a long time, and and I hadn't even handled it lately. You know, it was tucked away in a safe and a sock, you know, for months and months and months, and hadn't even pulled it out and fondled it. And I just was thoroughly enjoying that video, and I was just thinking at the time, you know, the the people who are just eating up with, uh, with you know, whatever it is, the polymer firearms and the ARs and AKs, just like I am at times, uh, I, I wish everybody, I say this a lot, you know, could enjoy uh, the pleasures of, of firearms like that. You know, just the historical firearm, uh, occasionally at least. So anyway, I'm gonna let you go and uh, uh, answer the call to my cat. See what the when when my cat tries to call me, I get the meow uh, ringtone. So appreciate you coming out, and uh, I've had a good time shooting these two firearms. And you know I'm happy with this Beretta 1301. Uh, if you have one and have had a lot of trouble with it, just don't tell me. <laughs> no, that's fine. Tell me whatever your experience has been. If you fired one or if you owned one, or if there's anything you think I really need to do to it. Uh, I'm not sure I like to do that in. I don't know if I'll put a sling on it. I guess I'll leave that on there. I guess that gives some support to the magazine. If I take it off, does that mean the, uh, the tube is going to be uh, less stable? I don't know. I haven't totally field stripped uh, uh, the one I'm yet, so I don't know. But, you know, I don't know if I need to replace anything. So I might... Eventually, I don't know if I put an optic on it or not. Probably not. I typically don't want one of those on a shotgun. I don't mind them on a, a rifle, uh, pistol caliber carbine, that kind of thing. I'm not sure I want one on a shotgun. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, pretty cool. And uh, I'll probably have to shoot it a little bit after you're gone. You don't mind, do you? So good to see you all. And uh, I will see you next Sunday morning, hopefully right here in these very same woods oh oh before i leave i had one thing to i have been watching uh um yeah you, you can't get rid of me can you in the last couple of weeks maybe three i don't know i decided i noticed on netflix that brand of brothers was was on there again and uh i have that series somewhere well what format it's in cds i guess yeah <laughs> VHS, no. And uh, 
uh, I watched that whole thing all the way through again and I'm about halfway through the Pacific you know the the, the other one that uh, Hanks and Spielberg made uh, World War two both of them of course uh, and I tell you what if you haven't seen those you haven't especially band of brothers but they're both good now you gotta be ready it's like watching um, uh, Saving Private Ryan you know it's it's gruesome uh, uh, and, and a lot of it uh, hmm must be because that's what war really is like right pretty much so. uh, but boy those things are so well done so well done uh, if you if you unless you're really really squeamish about things like that I highly recommend you know, the characters are so so good the, the script and everything uh, and it is a reminder you know of what people uh, have gone through in war and go through in war and why it's so undesirable to have war how utterly horrible and that's understatement right how utterly horrible it is uh, and it also helps you understand why people come home from that why they might not be the same it may not be the same old Joe that uh, shipped off two years ago or five years ago you know so uh, just absolutely uh, horrifying, you know, and uh, uh, you know, going through that and, uh, the, uh, and even, even the boring parts and all that. Just why I always have so much appreciation for people that have served and are serving right now, whether they're in a war or not, uh, whether they fired a shot or not, you know, uh, outside the shooting range. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, the commitment, the, the inconvenience of it. You know, um, just you know something that they've done and I haven't. They were ready to go to war, you know, and uh, so I just always really appreciate that. And boy, they've been through something like that. Just, there's no way to uh, adequately express appreciation for that. Uh, so, other than <laughs> provide plenty of psychological help as much as we can, right? Because that's just an unbelievable experience and. The way Spielberg, of course, and Hanks put you there, and whoever did uh, Saving Private Ryan, but just, just an, an, an incredible uh, uh, visualization, you know, and uh, of seeing you know, what it would pretty much. Now, if you've been involved, you could chime in. Is it, it you like that? And, and of course, that's World War II. And there were just such prolonged periods of that, you know, moving through Europe and, and in, uh, in the Pacific, taking all those islands and just, you know, and doing it by just numbers of men, you know, sailing, whatever, to the islands and, and disembarking and then just moving across with their firearms and machine guns and bombs and mortars and, and just, uh, you know, just the attrition rate, incredible number of men killed, that, that kind of warfare. Uh, but, but anyway, you know, it's just uh, amazing, really. It's a, it's a reminder. Even, I, I always recommend people, uh, adults at least, uh, to try to watch that at some point, like Saving Private Ryan or, um, uh, you know, Band of Brothers of the Pacific, probably even harder in some ways, but uh, if you have to cover your eyes, uh, try to watch some of that uh, just to, uh, yeah, because a lot of people don't really have an idea, I think, what that can be, like people like me that have never been involved in it. You know, if you got an imagination, you can imagine it, right? But uh, when you see these types of productions, it really uh, brings home, wow, now I understand why Uncle Joe never seemed to be quite himself, you know, when he got back or whatever. I, I have an uncle, had an uncle, he's died now, Uncle uh, Charles, who uh, was, went to Korea and he got captured. He was in a prison camp for like 36 months. It's a horrible story, horrible experience, you know, and things like that. And, and you know, after that, and, and most of them didn't survive in his camp, he did. And just because he's so tough, but you know, and, and plus his number wasn't up. I, I think one of the stories was they'd line them up and just shoot every other one of them, 
you know, uh, that have food for them. Just, they throw rice balls over the fence and let them fight for it. And there were some of the stories I heard, uh, not directly from him, just from my mother. It was, it was his brother and different things. But, but anyway, just just uh, so tough. And uh, uh, you know, going through that, and when you come back, expected to, you know live life like a normal person whatever that is but anyway i just mentioned that uh, those are on netflix right now and uh, if you get netflix and you like that sort of thing and especially if you've not seen them uh, band of brothers is just really 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 good so i'm gonna let you go it just occurred to me as i was trying to leave right so i've enjoyed having you into the woods life is good